Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome. Um, this webinar is presented by the Healthy Food Choices in Schools Community of Practice. Uh, and today we're pleased to welcome Shelly Clark. She is from Live Well uh, Colorado School Food Initiative, and she, where she is a chef consultant. Shelly is a trained chef with over two decades of culinary experience. And today she'll be discussing how to get started with scratch cooking, tips and tricks for planning ahead, and ideas for marketing new menu items. So thank you so much for joining, and I'll turn it over to Shelly. Thank you, Katie. So thank you, everybody, for joining us in this webinar this afternoon. Uh, like Katie said, I'm Chef Shelly Clark, and I'm a chef and culinary educator here in Denver, Colorado. I have been working with the Live Well Colorado School Food Initiative uh, as a chef consultant for, since its inception. And for about eight years, the last eight years, we've been helping school districts across the state move to a more from scratch model of food service. So here in Colorado, we have been lucky enough to have amazing support of school food reform. And we've been able to serve over 90 school districts in our state alone that vary in size from extremely large to very, very small. So as you can imagine, with that breadth under our wings, we have seen lots of things. We've seen, a part, we've been a part of many different kinds of transitions. And we have, in that process, curated a number of what we call best practices that uh, we try to integrate when working with a district that wants to make significant changes in their food program because our experience has shown us that there really is a best place to start in moving your program to more scratch cooking. With all of our successes, we have also seen false starts and the frustrations that come along with those situations. So in an effort to start at the right place, we suggest small changes that have big significant impact. And I will share two of those ideas uh, here with you today. So the first one is to create a salad bar, implement a salad bar. To clarify just on language here, I'm going to use the term salad bar as the idea of a bar that is complete with lettuce, vegetables, fruits, dressings, maybe toppings. But I also want to say that I have worked with districts that have implemented what they call harvest bars or fruit and vegetable bars, which is really a bar with maybe a few different kinds of vegetables, usually a fruit, but no lettuce necessarily, and not usually dressing. So I just want to enroll all of that into this concept of a salad bar. It's this, they're all the same concept. The harvest bar is just a smaller scale than what I'm calling a salad bar. And by the same concept, I mean, they're all food that's been prepared and panned up in a hotel pan or a bullet pan, and then the students or the customers serve themselves. So a salad bar is a really relatively easy way to bring fresh scratch choices to your customers, your students, and make a huge visible impact and impression with relatively minimal disruption into the current uh, workflow. I've worked with a number of districts in Colorado who have successfully launched their vision. I mean, this was their first step launched their vision of an enhanced scratch program using a salad bar or a harvest bar and all of its accompaniments. It's like your opportunity that you get to scream it from the rooftops. This is my vision. Hey, look over here. We serve fresh, delicious, and healthy food. So something that looks like this. In our work in Colorado here, we have seen and there is evidence to support or to show that a salad bar, incorporating a salad bar, encourages the students not to mention the impact it has on staff and administration, it encourages them to buy into and support your program because they enjoy the idea of being able to come to this beautiful bar here and choose from numerous things. So if you think about it, for a reimbursable meal, we're basically telling the student what to eat, right? They have to choose a fruit or a vegetable. And nobody really likes to be told what to do, especially not blossoming youths. And so having a salad bar allows them to be a little bit in control of what they're eating, right? They get to make their own choices. It allows them to personalize their meal. And from your perspective, it provides you with great educational opportunities. We believe that the lunchroom is a place of learning. And we believe that the people that work in the lunchrooms are educators. And so it's an opportunity for you to educate about ingredients. You can use colorful signage that showcases 
fun facts about different fruits and vegetables you might throw out on your bar. And you can also encourage students to try new things by having some tasting days. Maybe you put a new ingredient out on the salad bar and they get to have palate growth. So it's still learning that's happening in your lunchroom and you're a big, big part of that. Another benefit to beginning your vision here with a salad bar is that it allows you to move as quickly or as slowly as your district and staff need to. So while you can start with a few items, you know, some lettuce, maybe a couple of vegetables, and maybe I think it's always a good idea to put your fruit out there, um, start with those things. This allows your staff to kind of get the hang of it, you know, weave it into their daily production, and it allows the students to become familiar with the kind of serve yourself model if you haven't done that before. And while we get feedback a lot about, oh, it's messy, um, we know that practice makes perfect, right? So it's all an educational experience. And by starting small, they can kind of get the hang of serving themselves. So the other great thing about the salad bar is that it never becomes stale, no pun intended. There are hundreds of ways to expand on your salad bar. So for example, you can incorporate house-made dressings. There's lots of opportunities there, and we do uh, suggest that you incorporate that early on with your harvest bar or your salad bars. And, you know, they're the go-to recipes that we use, the ranch dressing. We do an Italian dressing, and sometimes we'll do a strawberry basil vinaigrette. And so there's you can do an Asian kind of dressing. You know, there's lots of opportunities out there to add in flavors that your students might like. We want to uh, use this as a great opportunity to meet some of the USDA requirements. So for example, you might use the salad bar as a place to put your bean requirements, your bean and legume requirements. Sometimes those are hard to incorporate. So the salad bar is a great way to do that. We do that in a few, in a few different ways, but two of the most popular things that we do are, um, we call them bean croutons. And so I think they've actually started to become popular. They're for sale in grocery stores now where basically you just open a can of garbanzo beans, rinse them off, uh, dry them as well as you can, just kind of blot them dry, put them on a sheet pan with, um, lined with parchment, and then toss them with a little bit of fat, a little bit of oil of some sort, and then some kind of acid, lime juice or vinegar, or something to make them pop. And then you can use the sky is the limit on what kind of flavorings you want to do. If you want to put chili powder and, you know, cumin on the beans, or if you want to put, you know, oregano on the beans, something like that, you know, you just throw them in a 350 degree oven and roast them until they're nice and dry and crunchy. So that's a fun thing to incorporate on the bar. We also do a bean salad, a three bean salad that's highly flavored. Um, it has tomatoes and and has some red peppers in it and it has a chili cumin dressing that goes with the bean salad. But you know, the chili cumin dressing, just as an aside, would be a really nice dressing to put on your salad bar and incorporate into the housemaid dressing area if you wanted to. It's quite delicious. So you will have the recipe for that uh, in the slides that you get at the end of the presentation. So there are those ideas for beans. Uh, hummus is always a great idea. And, um, and then what is fun also is to take your vegetables that you would normally serve cold, you know, broccoli or cauliflower or the carrots, the baby carrots, which are, you know, super easy, right, to just throw into the bullet pan. You can actually take those, put them into a bowl, takes you 30 seconds to toss it with a little bit of fat again, um, a little bit of acid, and then again, some seasoning, some herbs, some spices, toss those onto a sheet pan that's lined with parchment again, throw it into a 425 degree oven and roast them until they're you know, tender, until they've gotten a little bit sweet and until they have some browning on them. So uh, cool those down and then put those on the bar. So there's lots of different options and you can work in new recipes or you could do something as simple as just roast your vegetables and throw them on the bar. The other idea that we like that's not on this list is actually um, something called flavor shakers or seasoning shakers. And we've been working with those now where you just combine some spices and some herbs into a you know, plastic shaker and you put those on the end of the bar. And so they might be spicy or they might be, you know, they might have a chili and cumin flavor and they might have more of an Asian-y flavor or they might have garlic and onion powder flavor. And so you can put these shakers at the end of the bar and students can use those on their salads as well to add flavors. So you can see that there's a lot of really fun things that you can do with the salad bar um, that you can really uh, explore with it. You can get creative with it. And then it's all very easy, simple things 
that you can work into your daily production in you know, an extra five minutes or something to roast the vegetables. So with all of that inspiration, you will have manageable changes. Uh, any new venture requires planning and will throw you some challenges. So we do suggest that we take it slow. You don't just jump in wildly without taking a pause to really plan out what you're going to do with your salad bar. And, and that means, you know, first sort of enrolling your, uh, your staff and talking to them about your vision and your dream here so that everybody's on board. So um, you might need to obtain a satellite salad bar. You want to make sure that you have a food safe and sanitary place to offer a salad bar. You want to make sure that you have the ability to keep it cold and to comply with all of those regulations. So you might need to obtain a satellite bar. You might have a setup in a school that allows you to serve directly from the line, something cold directly from the line. You might be able to set it up on the line, you know, with ice pillows and things. And we know that every school district is different and every school within that district is different. And so it's important to start out by taking an inventory of what it is that you have so that you know what you'll need when you go to watch your vision. You might need to provide some of your staff with a little bit of training maybe some uh, knife skills, maybe a little training on knife skills, maybe a safety and sanitation overview, that's always helpful, and maybe an overview of PARs that you've created for each of your schools, you know, how much should be prepped every day, and maybe your district SOPs for salad bar leftovers and for how they go about weighing any leftovers that they have and recording that information. You just want to make sure as a manager or a food service director that your staff will feel prepared, that they will feel supported, um, because they're really the ones that are going to be selling this to the kids. And they have to have a great attitude about it, and they have to be excited about it, and they have to love it. And then they can educate their kids with their enthusiasm and get everybody on board. So doing that little bit of training and just checking in with everyone and making sure everyone feels secure provides for a really great foundation. So you'll also want to think about any additional equipment that you might need. So things as simple as um, bullet pans. I like those black. I like the black plastic bullet pans. I think those look really nice with food in it. It really pops out. Any storage containers. You know, you might need extra storage containers with lids. We always have a lot of storage containers and we don't always have a lot of lids. So uh, storage containers for lids when we are prepping for our salad bar and, um, you know, serving utensils for the bar any ice pillows or cooling kinds of implements that you think you might be needing. You know, some schools and some kitchens might need something as simple as cutting boards. They might need a good knife, you know, one or two knives that is really nice and sharp so that makes the work easy. And, you know, if you're a district that has or a school that has some volume to it and you have a little bit of extra money, there are tools out there that can help you mechanize these tasks of cutting cucumber spears or slicing tomatoes or things like that. The sun-kissed sectionizer is a really great tool and it's not very expensive. Uh, I think maybe it's three or four hundred dollars and it has lots of different blades in there. And so if you have a little bit of extra money or can generate a little extra money, we'll talk about how to do that. That might be something that would be of interest to your school or to your district. And super, super high on the priority list is this whole idea of communication. So you've communicated with your staff initially that this is your vision and that you'd really love to do this and you know, you've, you've done that. And it's really important to communicate with your administration and your faculty and um, other staff in the school and parents and maybe you have a board at the school that you have to um, often work with. Anyone that you are working with or even anyone in the community that you would like to share this with. And while you don't have to get approval, it's not communicating for somebody to give you approval. You might not have to get approval. You might be able to just do what you want. But for this change, you really want everybody to be on board and you want everybody to support your efforts and to ensure your success. So enroll as many people as you can into this process and it will really help you to build a sustainable program.
So we talked about, you know, the Sunkist suctionizer and having money to, to buy some, some additional equipment. And we know that school food programs often don't have a lot of funds uh, for new salad bars or for new equipment. And so I wanted to provide you a couple ideas and a resource to support your salad bar efforts. This first website, New Salad Bar to Schools, is a great opportunity. It's a grant program that will send salad bars out to schools that you can apply for. And we've worked with many districts that have utilized this opportunity to get freestanding satellite salad bars in their kitchens and in their schools. And I've also seen a lot of schools utilize PTA support to help purchase equipment needed to launch a salad bar. You know, wellness committees are great people to ask for that. And even school Kids in like uh, school programs, they can raise money if they're, you know, dedicated or they would like to help out. They can raise money um, for you to buy a salad bar. I've seen a lot of creativity in this area. And then lastly, just this last year, I was working in a district. We have uh, the local food organization, Colorado Potato Board. I was working in a school and they put out a call for students and kids to um, send in a video about why you should eat potatoes. <laughs> Why are potatoes necessary in your diet? Why are potatoes delicious? You know, they were trying to generate some fun stuff for their own marketing. And in doing that, the winner of um, that video was going to get a salad bar donated to that school by the Colorado Potato Board. And so it actually was won by a school, by a school that a district that I work with. And I was actually out there when they were launching the video. And it's very cute in a very fun way for a student to, um, you know, do some videography work that she liked to do and also to support the school lunch program in that school. So there might be other food organizations, local organizations that would be interested in helping you out to get a salad bar, freestanding salad bar, or some equipment for that. So the second best practice that I'd like to share with you, concept that I want to share with you today, is this. Moving to scratch or taking steps to move to scratch cooking does not mean that you turn your program upside down. And it does not mean that you ditch all the foods that the students have come to love and expect from your program, right? We want to continue to offer those foods to students because they are customers and they come and they buy it and that supports the program. So we want to continue to have those offered to them and we want to preserve their choices in the lunchroom. But maybe we can do it with a little bit of a fresh twist. And that's our idea here, where we take a popular menu item like pizza and we quote unquote scratch it up. So we make it a little bit better. So for example, here's some thoughts around that. You could buy a clean label crust that's already formed and made and you can build the pizza yourself and bake it in your oven and serve it really nice and hot and beautiful. Doing this, you know, allows you to vary the toppings. You can change it up. And if you implement a salad bar, you might have a nice opportunity for cross utilization of product there of excess salad bar items. So maybe you roasted some red and green peppers or you roasted some onions or something like that and you serve that on the salad bar and you have extra, you can put those items on your pizza for the week. And that's really nice utilization of product. Maybe you get to the point where you're making your own pizza sauce. Who knows? You can make one sauce that can be used to put on the pizza. It can be used to serve with your cheese sticks if you do that. It can be used to make your meatball sub, you know, serve on your meatball sub. It can make, be used to serve with your pasta primavera. So you have one sauce that you can make in a, in a volume and then divvy that up across menu items. And making your own sauce is obviously a little bit fresher, if you will, um, than some store-bought sauces for sure. And then another simple scratch up for pizza is I think to buy some different kinds of cheese, maybe a higher quality cheese with a better flavor. So while you have your mozzarella that you normally put on, maybe you like work in a little bit of a grated Parmesan cheese, which has, you know, kind of a high salt flavor, uh, you know, real bumped up flavor. You put a little bit of that in with your mozzarella and you top that on the pizza and it just really makes it pop out like that. So there's lots of ways that you can elevate the quality of much loved items and bringing more scratch cooking into the kitchen doesn't mean that you have to, you know, throw those things away and toss them out the window.
both of these suggestions, bringing a salad bar into the, into the kitchen, into the lunchroom, and scratching up your best sellers, really allow you to take the first steps to bringing more scratch cooking into your school lunch program in a really methodical way, in a thoughtful way, that will only help to build a sustainable program and help eliminate any false starts. That's really what we want to do, is we want to make a big impact that is going to engage a lot of people and is going to say, hey, we're changing things up here and we're making everything better. The things that you love and the new things that you will come to love. So in addition to the resources that I provided you earlier with the um, help to get salad bar needs, I've also provided here some resources for some recipe and menu planning tools. I wanted to incorporate some of that as well. So the first one, the lunchbox, that's Chef Ann Cooper's uh, website. I'm sure that you all know who she is. She's known as the, or she was known as the renegade lunch lady. I don't know if she's still known as that. But <laughs> when she first came to the Boulder Valley School District, that's how she was known. And so she's been up in Boulder as just a wonderful pioneer for elevating school lunch. And she has done amazing work. So this Lunchbox website, it not only offers guidance on salad bar setup, and they have like pictures of everything that you should have on your salad, or you could have on your salad bar and how to do it and what days to serve everything and the menuing of the salad bar. It's amazing, this resource that, that is here for salad bar, but it also has really great recipes. It also has cycle menus that are complete cycle menus, four week and six week, I think, cycle menus that have recipes for every single day. And you can, you know, basically lift that whole cycle menu and that can become what you do for your scratch program when you're ready for that. So it has that available and it has amazing budgeting tools to help you. So, you know, it's so much more than just the salad bar tools and resources. So if you go on there, poke around and see, there's a lot of other um, opportunities for help and support. The second one is the Project Bread cookbook. Project Bread is a nonprofit organization out of Boston. And their goal is to change the way people eat and to end hunger with health. So they compiled this cookbook after their chefs had spent years in Boston public schools, and uh, it includes recipes specific to the school food environment that are delicious and cool and fun and unique, as well as the next um, link, the Vermont New School Cuisine Cookbook. This also provides amazing recipes, delicious recipes and inspiration from the Vermont school system. So take a look at those. And then finally is the USDA compilation of recipes. And they have some recipes in there that have been recently updated and there's some nice inspiration in there. So I hope that this webinar has provided you with some fresh ideas, some inspiration, some motivation, and a healthy dose of support and encouragement knowing that you're not alone in taking the steps to start from scratch. And I think it's really important to remember to have fun with Fresh. Have fun with what you're doing. Have fun with these first new steps. Remember some of the things we talked about here. Go slow and take time to communicate and enroll your staff. Plan and execute the, um, if you're going to do salad bars and harvest bars appropriately, go ahead and look at the equipment that you have. Plot your strategy so that you're very well planned out. Communicate your intentions with everybody that you know and um, your entire community and use great marketing tools and, and the things that you can utilize within the school, the newsletters and the menus and things like that to shout out that you're going to be doing this and um, get buy-in from everyone, scream it from the rooftops, it's gonna be beautiful, and be excited and sell it. You guys are lunchroom educators, and half the challenge I find in getting the students and the customers to eat from the lunchroom is to be excited about it and to sell it and be like, you've gotta eat this lasagna that we did. You've gotta look at this beautiful salad bar and get parents and get teachers and get staff and get administration and get everybody talking about it and eating, from, eating with your program. And that's the way to sustain it. So with all that being said, thank you so much for the 20 minutes or half hour that you're spending here. With us, I'm happy to take questions, comments, thoughts, reflections, anything and everything is welcome. Great. Thank you so much, Shelley. There are a couple questions that have come in um, as you were talking. 
So the questions that have come in so far, there's three. The first one is, some schools and school districts are scared by the term scratch cooking as it makes them think of more work, equipment needs, and additional training for staff. Are there other words or phrases that can be suggested for the same concepts without calling it scratch cooking? Well, you know, I think that you, with, with the idea of doing just a salad bar, uh, which is so popular now, you really avoid that whole idea of scratch cooking because you're just doing a salad bar. And I think from the perspective of, you know, people being afraid that there's more cost and there's more, more cost involved and there's more work involved, I think that it really is about communication and getting ahead of those perceptions because what we are always doing when we're going to work in schools is we are always thinking about the workload of the food service worker, the workload of the manager, and we're wanting to, these two things that I suggest are really time savers. So a lot of schools I go into, I see people cupping fruits and vegetables. And while that seems easy because you're just, you know, taking the carrots out of the bag, if you look at the amount of time that that takes to put the carrots in the plastic cup, you are, you would actually save yourself, you know, 45 minutes of that hour by just throwing the carrots into a bullet pan. So I think it's a little bit about getting ahead of the communication, you know, getting ahead of this sort of perception by communicating the intention at the beginning, if that helps. At all. Great, thank you. The next question is, how do you deal with salad, bar, salad bars at the elementary level? I discussed salad bars with food service director, directors who are very concerned about the mess it makes, yeah. touching food and needing to have a staff person monitor at all times. Right. So it does, uh, we do hear the same things and uh, you're not alone. So we, I've seen a few things. One, I've seen at the elementary level specifically. So if you have, you know, kindergartners and first graders, some schools that I've been to, they, they don't, they're not really doing the salad bar for those guys. They'll cut something up for them, you know, so that they can just take it like that. And then at the, after the first grade, they're educating and, and the kids are, you know, seeing the salad bar as they come in. So they're getting used to it. And it really is, and I hate, you know, it's sort of, it sounds like a cop out, but it really is about the education. And so while it might entail a little, a little bit of work at the front end, it does get better. So some of the things that we suggest if you're looking to do this at an elementary level is in your planning process, are there some um, parents? Are there some folks in the wellness committee? Are there some some salad bar advocates in the school that would be willing to come into the kitchen and work with you for an hour or an hour and a half during service time and help train, if you will, the students and the kids to get through the salad bar quickly. And then you repay them. Maybe you buy them lunch one day or, um, you know, something like that. Really kind of enrolling some maybe outside help with that. And I have found, I think we have all found that within the first month, it might be a little clunky, but after that, uh, we all get into a groove, you know, and it becomes normal and it doesn't take as much time and they're not as like, whoa, no way, carrots, really? I can serve myself? You know, so they're not taking as much time. They're moving quicker through the bar and they sort of have a whole self-serving thing down. And, you know, what it really is, is talking with your superintendent about the importance of this fresh and veg this fresh fruit and vegetable component and the idea that they choose themselves they choose for themselves and it increases the amount of fresh fruits and vegetables that they eat great thank you and um, I think we have time for one more question uh, how is the salad bar incorporated into the reimbursable meal and how do you count the servings of fruits and vegetables yeah, so it is, the whole idea is, is that you don't serve a hot vegetable on the line anymore. You don't serve anything. Every, all of your fruits and vegetables, maybe your bean component, all of that comes off of the salad bar. So it's completely included in the reimbursable meal. We do, there is protocol for, for making sure that, you know, if it's a half a cup, if it's a three quarter of a cup, that you put the um, right serving utensil on the bar in that container. Right, so that if they take one scoop, 
then that is equal to the half a cup or the three quarters of a cup, whatever, whatever it is based on your grade level. So um, yes, it completely counts towards the fruit and vegetable requirement. Uh, we usually say that the salad bar should be put before the POS so that you can, whoever is checking out the student, they can check and make sure that they do have enough fruit and vegetable. And if they take one scoop, like I said, that's the easiest way to do it. And use some of that signage on the bar itself. You know, if you have, let's say if you have oranges and, you know, so you're going to, you're going to um, sectionize the oranges and four wedges, you know, is a serving. So, you know, have some signage on your bar, take four wedges, or, you know, if you serve the little cutie, two cuties as a serving. So take two cuties, you know, like indicating to them how much they, they should be taking. And all of that should start at the beginning. So their first trip through the salad bar, they're looking at it, they look up, it says, oh, okay, it's celery, you know, and you have it caught such that when they take the scoop, you know, they put it on their tray. One scoop is a, you know, is a serving. So all of that education sort of happens right at the beginning of launching that salad bar. And then let me, can I go back, Katie, one, one um, thing I do want to add, I don't think I touched on the kids may touch the food on the previous question. Yeah, so this, this is, the kids will definitely touch the food. <laughs> so, um, so managing the quantity of food that is out on the bar is really important. So when you're going ahead and you're ordering your, if you're ordering some new bullet pants for the bar, I suggest getting some of the four inch ones and some of the short two inch ones. Because if you have like, if you sold out all your carrots and you have one class left, right? You can bring out a bullet pan that's a one inch or a two inch bullet pan with one very thin layer of carrots for that last class. And then you sort of manage how much waste you might have because most schools I've been in, not all of them, but most of them make it a practice to discard everything from the salad bar that isn't used on a daily basis. So you do want to utilize some of those, some of those tips of using smaller serving containers, but making sure it looks bountiful to manage the amount of waste, if that makes sense. If anyone has any additional questions, please feel free to reach out directly to me and I can make sure that we get your questions answered through Shelly. My email is healthy underscore food underscore choices underscore in underscore schools at cornell.edu. So thank you so much for joining and thanks again, Shelly, this has been great. Oh, thank you guys very much and uh, I appreciate you spending your time with me. I know how valuable it is. And um, yeah, feel free to send questions to Katie and I'll do my best to answer them.